and the portion size is good. It's not like you're uh, getting too much food. So you actually eat better. You're not like overeating, overstuffing yourself. The location is great. It's literally a five minute walk to the BTS. And we're going from where we're staying to the hospital, the private hospital. We love the Thai people yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> We've only been here for 10 days. <laughs> we love them. They are so friendly. Welcome back to another video. If you are new to our channel, welcome to our channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon to get notified when we come on new videos. As you guys saw in our last video, we finally made it to the beautiful city of Bangkok. Yeah. We are so excited to be here and we're going to show you what we've done in our first 10 days here in Bangkok and also share with you all of our first impressions and just how we feel overall of this amazing city that we're now in. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy going from such a small beach town to a huge city of 15 million people. <laughs> yeah, there's crazy, like all the buildings behind us, all the malls and stuff like that. Awesome. We're gonna show you all this, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe, like I said, because we're gonna have a lot of videos coming out. So yeah, let's get started. Today we're just looking at a few different condos with a property manager that we reached out to. We're just looking, we're not gonna show you guys full condo tours or anything like that. You're just kind of showing a few clips, uh, again, first impressions of Bangkok. So we wanna show as much as we can in the first little bit that we're here.
right, so we just came to the mall, Terminal 21. We're in the food court, which is basically street vendors. And the pricing is the same as if you were to order in the street because they actually don't pay for the stalls. It's a free stall for them to use. And that's the way they can keep the pricing the same as if it was a street cart. Really cool. So what you do is you have to go to one of the stalls where they uh, have ladies working and you have to get a card. So you just give them cash. You'll get a card, all your money's on there. You use this at all the different stalls so you don't have to pay them cash at each one. And then when you're done, you can either keep it and come back another day or you can go back to the stall and get the cash back that's remaining on the card. So it's really cool how they do that. There's no handling of money at the at the stalls. Keeps it clean that way. There's a lot of choice here. Uh, yeah, we don't even know where to start as far as what we're gonna order. We're gonna wander around and see what we can find. I'm gonna give this a try here. My second pad crap The first one was at the uh, airport in the last video. It's good, but I can definitely see how there'd be a better versions of this out in the streets. Even the one that I had at the airport was a little bit better than this as well. It had better flavor. It's got a good heat to it. Could use a little bit more, but I mean, overall, for a quick meal, inexpensive. This was, uh, I believe it was 30 baht or something like that. And, and uh, Jaden got a pad thai, it was 30 baht. So under the, under a dollar, you got a meal. Not huge portions, we're finding that a lot of the uh, places we've eaten, the portion size is good. It's not like you're uh, getting too much food. So you actually eat better. You're not like overeating, overstuffing yourself, like in North America or even in Costa Rica. But uh, yeah, again, if uh, you're looking for a place to come that's inexpensive and has a lot of variety, then come to the food court here at Terminal 21. All right, so we just finished eating here at the food court at Terminal 21. Really good food. Yeah, you can tell it's like the street food style food. And uh, for us to have four main dishes, four smoothies, uh, we got a couple of uh, sausages and some uh, pork balls and a couple waters it was like $15.63 so you are paying street food pricing here even though you're in the mall and it's genius I mean they don't charge them to have their stalls here so the prices can stay low people come they want to eat here because it's good food for a good price and then they're gonna shop at the same time so yeah it's a it's a good business plan of what they're doing here so how they recommend it if you are in the area come to Terminal 21 check out the food court do some shopping there's also a lot of cool little restaurants there's like a sushi place with a little conveyor belt. You can get that, there's hot pot. Uh, there's all sorts of different types of fare here as far as uh, different uh, types of food, different um, ethnicity of, of food. So yeah, it's really cool too. They got all this stuff. So it's based on an airport. That's why it's called Terminal 21. So there's all these different areas. This is San Francisco. There's, um, there's London. There's a, a few different places. So each floor is a different country. It's really cool. So yeah, we're gonna head back now. Uh, relax and digest a little bit and we'll probably see you guys tomorrow. morning finally had a proper sleep <laughs> that's a nice sunny day here in Bangkok it's so beautiful when it's sunny like most cities but it's extra special here so yeah it's just about 10 o'clock we're actually heading to terminal 21 the mall that we were at at the food court we weren't gonna do this yesterday but 
Jaden's phone was dead, so we couldn't. So we actually have to get him a SIM card because his phone's not eSIM compatible. So we have to go get him one with a number and stuff like that. But yeah, it's again, having an Olafly eSIM already on your phone when you land is so much easier, much more convenient. You're not having to uh, search around for a spot, even though there are spots in the airport, but yeah, you don't have the hassle of like having to open up your phone, put the plastic card in, which obviously isn't good for the environment, all those little plastic pieces. Uh, yeah, I, I just like the fact that an eSIM gets rid of that. But yeah, Olafly eSIM, highly recommend getting one. You have unlimited data in over 150 destinations, Thailand being one of them, of course. And a hotspot here as well. So I was able to hotspot to Jaden so that he was able to go on his phone and, until we get this SIM card for him. But yeah, you can uh, choose unlimited data, as many days as you need in places like Thailand. So say you're coming for the 29 days or 30 days, you can pick that many days when you purchase the eSIM. You can also do regional eSIMs as well. So if you are planning to travel around Asia, you don't just have to pick each country and buy each eSIM for that country. You can actually pick the region and it's gonna work all over. So it's a one-time purchase, one-time setup. Of course, unless you're staying for longer than the, the 90 days, which I believe is the max, then you'd have to purchase again, but it's just so, so convenient. And the actual speed here is really fast too, like for your data, been able to download stuff and work on the go without any hiccups or issues so um, we'll put the link below for you to purchase an Olafly eSIM you're gonna save five percent or you can use the app and then use our code the Defrains. you can download the app on uh, Android or an iPhone they have it for both operating systems so that's really convenient as well because then you don't have to scan the QR you just do it straight, straight from the app so yeah definitely get yourself an Olafly eSIM again link below and uh, yeah save time save the hassle and have unlimited data you can share everything on your travels like a cart going down the street with cardboard if you want to take a picture or a video and throw that on Instagram you don't have to worry about going over any data limit so now yeah, we're gonna continue on to Terminal 21 we have to take the SkyTrain couple stops really easy to use and uh, yeah we'll see uh, see what kind of sim card we can get them so we've decided we're actually gonna stay put at the place that we're in now the location is great it's literally a five minute walk to the BTS and then it's like a one minute walk to a grocery store other uh, place other stores there that are convenience <laughs> narrow part of the sidewalk and um, yeah, it's just, it's just a really great location. It's nice because there's actually a decent sidewalk to walk to the BTS. But yeah, everything everything is around us. And uh, we, yeah, we looked at those other places, but just price point right now, we'd want to spend a little bit more than what those ones were and have something a bit newer with a city view and stuff. So we got to wait, wait till high season <laughs> at Sikasa, have a little more income. Just got to be budget smart right now. And uh, so yeah, we'll see if we can like do a six month here and then make that decision at that point. Again, we do want to try and stay for at least a year, but the visa thing is the only thing we're worrying about right now. And again, hopefully that digital nomad visa comes out soon and we can apply for that and be accepted for that. It's basically what we do anyway. And there's a few things you have to prove, which we can do. But yeah, that's uh, that's the plan now. So at least, at least try to get six months here and then maybe look at other options or maybe just stay there for the entire time until we move on to the next country. But we may even stay here longer. It just depends on uh, how much of the country we've seen by then. Definitely want to go to the beaches and islands and stuff and show you guys that. But yeah, it's uh, Bangkok's just awesome. It's like, it's a city, but it has such a cool feel. And uh, yeah, everybody, everybody's been super friendly too. They all smile and they all excited about the dogs. They all take pictures and videos of the dogs and stuff. But yeah, we're just at the uh, stairs here for the BTS. It's really cool too. They have uh, this walkway 
goes underneath the entire BTS. I'm not sure how far it goes, like from what station to what station. But if you plan on like just walking, you just stay up here, and especially if it's raining, then you stay dry. There's also all these little vendors and stuff, so you get coffee, you get all sorts of food and stuff like that. But yeah, we gotta get a ticket here. There's some that accept cash, but there's some that just do coins or QR, so then you can just go over to these people here in the, in the booth and they can hook you up. You can also get a rabbit card and then you can just load that up with however much money. You just continue to use that. You don't have to buy the cards each time. So we we're eventually gonna get that. That way we don't have to worry about getting this all the time and we just can go straight in. There's also this little convenience store here. They're kind of all over the place called Turtle. See if you need a drink or a snack or a little bag of dog food, they have it. So we're gonna run in here and get a drink quickly. And this one, you gotta go around the back to get drinks. Maybe they're all like that. Gatorade is less than a dollar here in Costa Rica. It was one mil, so it was like two bucks. So it's like half the price, of, more than half the price. So SIM card for Jaden is done. So yeah, we just went to AIS, which is on the sixth floor here at uh, Terminal 21. So they are going under renovation soon, but they'll be open in August again. So if you're seeing this at the end of, by the end of July, you need to come here. They will be closed. You can go to Atmosphere. They have another location there. But yeah, really easy. Uh, they have, you can do just like a uh, post -play, post paid one. You have to do at least four months. So we're just gonna wander around here for a little bit. Uh, just see what kind of stores are in here kind of show you a few of them um, yeah it's so cool having the availability and convenience now after being in <laughs> Jane, after being in uh, Samra for seven years and you know you'd have to like plan to have stuff brought down now it's like hey what do I need I can just go get it um, and it's Samra was good for that Costa Rica was good for that teaching us not to just go and buy stuff you know you don't have to have an excessive amount of stuff and uh, to you know, keep up with the, the Joneses, <laughs> but uh, at least we have that option now, and we have that uh, you know that life experience of not having that stuff readily available, so we can make proper decisions when it comes to purchasing stuff. Kind of minimalistic, which we like. I still think we brought too much stuff, but I mean the kids have toys and things like that too that they want to keep. But yeah, we're gonna wander around here, show you a few of the things we find. Yeah, again, it's a really cool mall. We're going down to London right now and there's a double-decker bus. bunch more food options too on the lower floor there's like a Dairy Queen and Subway and like donut places <laughs> salad factory and there's a cafe Amazon down here too which you'll see all over Thailand and actually a lot of countries in Southeast Asia have them
Uh, so we decided to come to Don Don Donkey, which is a famous market from Japan. They have a few of them in Bangkok. This is actually a donkey mall, so it's like a really big mall that's all part of Don Don Donkey. And uh, they have restaurants and different things as well. So we're in the supermarket bar right now, but there's like tons of stuff as you can see. So we're just gonna wander around, look around. It's just fun exploring new foods, new snacks, sauces, everything in the market that you can think of. But yeah, just thought we'd bring you guys along for this. It's, you know, part of our first week here in Bangkok, just exploring areas that are close to where we are. But yeah, it's crazy all the different things they have. Check it out. We stopped at a place that's across from Don Don Donkey. It's just over here. You can see the sign up there. Um, and there's 7 Eleven on the corner. So you go around that corner, it's Don Don Donkey. But yeah, this place is called Shakariki 432. And uh, originated in Osaka in 2002. So yeah, they have a uh, location here. And then they have one in Amosphere as well. So it seems like a popular place. But yeah, we're uh, getting some, some Japanese food. <laughs> I'm um, getting a, a curry udon or something like that and then Shane is getting a ramen of course and they actually have like they have french fries and they have a sausage plate so that's what Jaden's getting and Lakai's getting some sushi so nice sunny day all right so we are in a grab which is the equivalent to uber here in Thailand and uh, yeah it's less than, or it's about, just over three dollars to get to where we're going we're going from where we're staying to the hospital the private hospital just to get prescriptions so one thing that's different here in Thailand compared to Costa Rica there's gonna be a lot of comparisons just because that's where we live for seven years but you can't just go into a pharmacy and get certain prescriptions you actually have to go see a doctor and get a prescription that way and a lot of this stuff or not a lot of it but a few things you can only get at the pharmacy at the hospital so that's why we're going there a couple of prescriptions we have to get there's like uh, medicine that Makai needs and a couple of things other things as well um, so yeah we're going there right now um, in the grab and he's actually teaching us a little bit of Thai how to say certain words like sukumvit and uh, kapkum kap like uh, you can just say kap like kapkum kap instead of kap <laughs> with the r so yeah just different things like that so it's, uh, once we get out more and start talking to the locals we're going to learn more of the language i thought we'd bring you along um, to the hospital just to show you what it is again first impressions of bangkok and just thailand in general so yeah i think we might be here now so i'll show you what it looks like and uh, film as much as I can. As obviously a hospital, I don't want to show too much. All right, so this hospital actually is like a mall. There's like restaurants and stores and all sorts of stuff. It's very nice, um, very helpful too. We went to a couple different desks and asked where to go and they actually have a registration desk which we're at right now. So Shane is just explaining uh, things that she needs. Um, one's like birth control, but you don't have to see a doctor for that apparently. So, um, and then we have to make a, an appointment with the pediatrician for Lakai to uh, talk about his medication. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're just here. She's just getting registered. Super friendly, super nice. Um, it's it's basically like a lot of expats come to this hospital, so uh, they're prepared <laughs> to be able to help you, and uh, they know like what what to ask and things like that. So yeah, highly recommend this hospital if you guys are in Bangkok. So um, but yeah, we're uh, 
in the process right now. So yeah, this hospital has all the different areas, the different centers, like a heart center, and like uh, depending on what you need, like x-rays and all that stuff. So it's all in this hospital. We're not used to that in Costa Rica. It was like, hey, you gotta go here. You gotta go to Liberia. You gotta go this place to go to this section. They actually have like the children's hospital in here as well. Imaging center, there's a sports and orthopedic center. Yeah, so basically anything that happens to you or you need uh, to have a doctor look at, you just come to this one hospital. Um, and yeah, they'll guide you in the right direction. You'll talk to the right people. Very friendly, a lot of people working as well. We're not used to that. Usually there's like maybe one person working at a counter and they like lined up and busy. So yeah, they're uh, it's a little bit different and it's kind of a nice change as, uh, as great as it was living in Costa Rica and having that laid back lifestyle. It's nice to know that, you know, if something did happen, we're within minutes to an amazing hospital. So um, yeah, I'll have the link to the location of this hospital and the name of it. If you end up being in Bangkok and you need something done, at least you'll know where to come. But uh, yeah, so we're just gonna, it's about 30 minutes we have to wait. She's gonna see a doctor and then uh, we'll have to come back, like I said, for the pediatrician. But yeah, so far really impressed. All right, so we just finished up at the hospital here. And just to let you guys know, this is a private hospital and the doctor's visit and then there's another like small charge it was 2500 baht which works out to just over 68 dollars us it's pretty good for a private hospital and they were like got her in right away and like organized everything like oh you got to go here go to the pharmacy and all that stuff so very professional here they're not sitting on their phone on TikTok and ignoring you and stuff like that we found a lot of times in costa rica unfortunately that you just get that from the people that are working, but here they're like very attentive. They're standing in the spot where they're supposed to be, making sure they're guiding you the right way. It is, it's like a mall or like a, a hotel. And yeah, again, very inexpensive. Even without, we just have travel insurance. So it doesn't cover prescriptions. Um, so we, even if you don't have prescription coverage, at least you know you can come and get what you need and it's not gonna cost you a lot. Any prescription was about $100 for the ones that you needed. And um, again, these are just certain prescriptions that you cannot get at the pharmacy. The pharmacy, you can go and get certain medications. It's just there's certain ones you have to come to a hospital and talk to a doctor. And this just happened to be a couple of them. So uh, yeah, very impressed with our visit here at the hospital in uh, Bangkok. another day here in Bangkok. I was just down here at Sukhumvit filming for the intro you guys saw. And uh, there's more satay down there. So I got 10 satays. So five chicken and five pork. So it was 100 baht. I haven't tried them yet to see what the flavor's like, but I'm sure they're amazing. But that's the thing, like, there's just so many spots around that you can get a delicious street food and quick too. It's like, just grab a couple of satays, some sticky rice, uh, there's some other stuff down there too. I didn't really look too closely. All right, so I had a few bites of the chicken one. Texture's not as good as the one down there. Flavor's different too. Still sweet though. But yeah, it's more of like a, a chewy chicken, I guess, more of like the thigh. Um, yeah, texture-wise not as good as the other one, but flavor-wise still good. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, Shane is still not 100%. Unfortunately, he got sick in LA. Kind of, I mean, immune system was down because of that. And then during the flight or the travel days, got something else. So yeah, still not 100%. So hopefully in the next day or two, she'll uh, she'll be feeling a lot better. Got some medicine and stuff for her, but uh, yeah, just got to rest. So the boys and I are gonna head over to M Cortier, which is a mall here. They have a area there, it's called Bounce. It's like trampolines and stuff. So yeah, they're gonna go there and use some energy up. And yeah, we'll just kind of check it out a little bit today. Nothing too crazy. But uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons we wanted to move from Samra is having more stuff for our kids to do. And Bangkok's loaded with things for them to do. So yeah, as you guys see in these upcoming videos, the different things we do, the different things they do. Something to keep in mind if you're planning on moving abroad with children or teenagers, finding a place where they can still have activities, meet kids, and uh, yeah, where there's communities. There's, there's expat communities here as well. So yeah, we're gonna head there now, taking the BTS as one stop over, and uh, we'll see you there.
So yeah, that's a cool little spot for uh, your kids to hang out. You have a little canteen there, so you get like that hot dogs and pizza. <laughs> it's so funny seeing that here. And then there's also um, a virtual laser tag. You can get in through that way, or there's doors over here. So we'll have to try that sometime. It'd be fun to do. And then they have um, Virgin Active. So it looks like there's a pool and stuff. Like must be a gym of some sort. It looks really cool though. So if you don't end up having a gym in the building you're staying in, there's a lot of gyms nearby. So this would be one you could check out. But it looks like they have a rock climbing wall, pool, a bunch of other things. It'd be worth uh, going in there and seeing what all they have. But yeah, I'm just gonna roam around the mall while the boys are doing that, see what's in here. There's so many malls to explore. So many different uh, spots. This place here is called Boots. You can't see it, but the logo looks like Roots. I'll show you. Roots Canada. What a cool little spot this garden is at M Cartier. The Starbucks in behind. It's like in the jungle setting, but you're up on the roof and you get a view of Bangkok. Really cool spot. Just kind of ran into this, wandered around the mall. So definitely gonna have to come back here, chill and have a coffee. But uh, yeah, if you're in, uh, in the mall, come and check it out. So it has been a few days since I last filmed. Uh, I think that was on Wednesday actually. Thursday I ended up getting sick as well. Had like the fever and all that stuff. So now all of us have had it. <laughs> so we spent a few days just relaxing and then now today we're feeling a little bit better. Not 100% but Shane and I decided to come down to Benji Kitty Park which is one of the main parks here in Bangkok. 
It's one of the biggest ones actually. It's really cool. There's a lake here and then you got all the buildings in behind. It's a cool atmosphere. You got the little ducks that you can go on. But yeah, so we just came down here just to kind of get out of the apartment a bit and uh, just relax in some nature. That's a nice thing is it's very green. And they have like this running path here, walking and running path, so people can do that. There's also an area that's like elevated over top of like, kind of like grassland, I guess. We've seen a lot of videos on the park, so it was kind of cool to be here and experience it firsthand. But uh, yeah, just uh, last day before the video comes out. It's actually Sunday. It's almost it's afternoon now, <laughs> so it's uh, early morning in North America on Sunday as well. So uh, yeah, I get to go back now and put the rest of this video together and upload it for you guys. But yeah, just a little chill hour or so here at Benji Kitty. We had to do a couple other things, so we're like, oh, we're close by, let's come here. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of B-roll here. We are gonna come back to Benji Kitty and do like a full video on it, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, here's, uh, here's a little bit of B-roll here at the park. So that's gonna be it for this video. Our first impressions it wasn't as many things we wanted to do that got done in this video, but uh, we still got to explore a little bit of Bangkok. Well, I did. Unfortunately, Shana being sick, she didn't get to experience way quite as much. Way too many sick days. Yes. Not not a good way to end up in Bangkok at first. <laughs> but uh, I've just been resting lots. Yeah. Just um, you know, we have lots of days ahead of us to go explore and yeah. make some more videos and see new things, try new things. But I've just been doing everything I can to to feel better. The boys got it too. So. Yeah, and then I got it on Thursday. So <laughs> yeah, we've just been resting. The last few days, we actually didn't really do anything. We went to the Commons, which you guys are seeing right now, which is a cool little hangout spot. At least we yeah. got out of the house for a bit and got to have some good food and you know hang out somewhere different than in the in the apartment that we have. But yeah, and then Benja Kitty, it's a cool little park here. Got but, some yeah. ducks on the lake back there. <laughs> Yeah. There's a bunch of ducks going around. Yeah, they're ducking around. Um, but yeah, it's cool. You can rent those and, and go around. But yeah, the Benji Kitty is the one park that's uh, in the main center area. And then there's also a Lumpini Park too. So lots of options for parks in Bangkok. It's this big city, but it's green. So that's one thing we noticed as far as first impressions is big city, but it still has that, you know, tropical feel because of all the plants. Yeah, and I like how it's it's very organized, the city here. I noticed that it's got a really nice layout. Like for being such a big yeah. city, it's just the layout is really good. It's very organized with the way the BTS runs and mm -hmm. stuff. So when you're coming here for the first 
first time to such a big city with lots of stuff going on, they actually make it quite easy for you to get around and figure things out. So. Yeah, it seemed like it'd be a little more overwhelming, but it's not at all because like you said, it's so organized and yeah. you know, they put infrastructure in which is proper. And a lot of you watching from North America or Central America, you probably don't realize that these Asian countries in Southeast Asia, they have these modern cities. Like oh, they're Bangkok. so developed. They're yeah. even more developed than other places that we've been. So. Yeah, and a lot yeah. cleaner. Like we've noticed too, a lot of people are out sweeping the streets first thing in the morning. Yeah, they take a lot of pride in, in exactly. the cleanliness here. Yeah, so that's another first impression is just like the pride that the people have of their cities here. And yeah, it's amazing. So, um, but yeah, we, we didn't get to go to old Bangkok yet. Uh, we really wanted to do that in this video, show you guys uh, the new and the old, but unfortunately being sick and being down for a couple of days to all of us totally. Lots of videos we can show yeah, that exactly, in to yeah. come in the future. <laughs> Future, so yeah. keep watching. Yeah, maybe even the next one will be uh, over in Chinatown or something like that. So I have to make a very important point. We feel very safe here. Yeah. Thailand in general is known to be a safe country, but a city like Bangkok, like huge like this, yeah. with lots of people and stuff like that, super, super safe. It doesn't matter what time of day we go out and there's a lot of people that go out late at night and they're able to walk around no problem. There's no issues. Um, if someone was to cause a problem, from what we've heard, the, the police really take charge here. Yeah. They take um, crime and uh, violence yeah. and things <laughs> like that very, very, very seriously and they actually punish for it and they actually do something about it. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people I think are just, you know, they're, they're scared to do bad things because they know that there's gonna be a consequence and they don't wanna go to jail, they don't wanna get in trouble, so. Yeah, actually we've heard that the Thai jails are really bad. Like, it's not a glamorous place like they are in North America. Yeah, you there's don't no pool tables there. and, and <laughs> movies yeah, and fancy exactly. food. Yeah, so people are like, I am not screwing up, I do not wanna end up there. So uh, yeah, that's the thing is there's yeah. actual full on punishment here, which is good. So you yeah. feel safe walking around, even with kids, like there's no issue, yeah. everybody's smiling and everything like that, yeah. so. We love the Thai people yeah. already. Yeah. <laughs> We've only been here for 10 days. <laughs> we love them, they are so friendly. Everyone's happy, they're just kind of minding their own business, but they're smiling and they're doing their thing. And yeah. they're just uh, just very warm and welcoming. So exactly, we yeah. have felt that right away. Like this gentleman right here walking by us, he's got a nice big <laughs> smile on his face. He's all happy. <laughs> he's very happy. And this is exactly what we're talking about, how how friendly and welcoming the Thai people are. So, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Especially Thai people are very welcome. Yes, yeah. we just we got here 10 it. days ago and we, we already notice it right away, just yeah. how friendly the Thai people are. So. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, because we are the land of smiles. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's very true. It's yeah. very true. So, yeah. all right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having yeah. us. <laughs> we look forward to exploring more. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your smile. <laughs> there you so go. that was there perfect timing right there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, very very friendly, warm, welcoming people. So yeah. we can't get can't get any better than that. It mixed in with everything else that we've already experienced in yeah. the first little bit. So exactly, and they love our dogs. So that's a, that's a plus <laughs> yeah. too. So our dogs are a feature here. Four <laughs> Chihuahuas, and everyone's going crazy. So for many of you that have followed our channel for the last seven years when we were living in Costa Rica, you will know that we always have a lot of diversity on our channel. Yeah. So we're going to be doing the same thing here and any other country that we ever visit. We're always going to have a wide variety of things that we feature on our channel from old parts of cities and towns to new parts yeah. to uh, pricing and information to hotel stays uh, lots of stuff to do with different types of food yeah. anything to do with the culture you name it. Yeah, walk just, through we, videos, exactly. Walk yeah, through videos, uh, little simple things to extravagant things, yeah. you know. So we want to make sure that you guys know that this will always be a very, very diverse channel and we're going to always give you different things to watch, different things to enjoy. And as always, we will make sure to keep you guys well informed while keeping you very entertained exactly, as well. Yeah. So that's always <laughs> our goal. So make sure you follow along so that you see what we have in store for you. That was the worst timing. A guy just started up his weed whacker for the outro. So uh, I'm down here a little bit further so yeah we'll leave the video off there if you guys like the video please leave a thumbs up if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button hit the little bell icon to get notified when we come out new videos and we'll see you in the next one Sawadee.